So what is a stack? The easiest way to think about a stack is like a stack of plates. If you have a table, let's say there's one right here, when you start stacking plates, you're gonna put them on top of each other. So you have a plate here, you have another one, and then you keep adding a few more. Now, the last plate that you stack, so the one on top, is actually always gonna be the first one you take off. So this follows what's known as phylo, first in, last out. The first plate that we put was actually this one, and it's gonna be the last plate that we take off the stack because we need to take off plates two, three, and four before we can access that one. And if you understand this, you understand stacks. They're very straightforward. So now let's talk about some of the methods involved with the stack and how this actually works in kind of your computer's memory and all of that. Now, firstly, just like queues, all of these methods on the side follow what's known as constant time. And that means doing this does not change based on how many items you have in your stack. So it's going to happen pretty well instantly in the computer. And if you have 10,000 items in your stack, it's going to take as much time as if you have two or three items in your stack. So that's the way to think about constant time. So let me just erase this and then we'll move on to these methods. So to add something to our stack, we can use one of two methods. Now, I'm just putting the or here because this means that they can be named something differently, but we can use what's known as put or push. Now, the standard convention is usually push, and this means push an item on top of a stack, just like if you're going to push a new plate on top of the stack of plates. So if we go here and we say push, and we push maybe the item 7 onto our stack, what's going to happen is we're going to come in from one side because our stack is one-ended as opposed to two-ended like our queue that we talked about previously. We're going to come up through the front, which is also the back because it's one side. We're going to put our item seven at the very bottom of our stack. Well, in this case, there's only one item, but again, it's still going to be the bottom. Now, if we go and we decide to push another item onto our stack, let's do that and let's see what happens. When we push, let's say the item six onto our stack, well, six is going to come in through the front, but it's also coming in through the back because there's only one end. And well, we're going to get six on top of seven. And that is how we push or add items onto the stack. And notice that they, well, stack. And that the most recent item you added is always going to be at what we call the top of the stack. All right. So now that we've done that, let's talk about how we can get an item off of the stack. So if we want to get and remove an item from our stack, we can use one of two methods, get or pop. Again, these just really depend on what you're naming your methods. They do the same thing. So if we decide to pop an item off our stack, what actually ends up happening is we go to the very top of our stack. So the last item we added on, which in this case is six, and we bring it, we delete it, and we bring it and return it to wherever pop was called. So what's actually happening here is let's say, you know, we go, maybe something like x equals pop. Well, now x is actually gonna be equal to six because that's what we popped off of the stack. And we're gonna remove six from our stack entirely. Now, if we do pop again, what will happen is we will now be removing seven because six was already removed. So now seven is the highest item on the stack or the last one to go in. So it's now coming out. Again, following this first in, last out, right? And that is kind of the principle to go by with these stacks. So let's um, go back and now let's look at another method. So let's pretend that instead of removing an item from our stack, we actually just want to look at what the top item is. Well, a lot of times we want to do that. And this is where we can use what's known as peak or front. So if we want to check what the front item in our stack is or the highest item, the most recent item to go on, we can use peak or front. And this is going to look and tell us what the item is without actually removing it. So if I call front here, What's going to happen is we're going to look, we're going to see seven is there and we're going to return seven to wherever we called front. So it's going to seven is going to go here, but we're not going to remove it from the stack. Again, it's a very useful thing that we often oftentimes want to do. All right. So that is how you kind of do that. We can use peak front, whatever we are calling it again for that. Now, the last two methods to talk about are is empty and is full. These do exactly what they say. They're going to tell us if the stack is empty or if the stack is full. Now, the reason we need these methods is because if we try to pop an item or peak an item and their stack is empty, we're going to run into an error. So oftentimes we need to check by using an if statement and saying if not stack is empty, right? Then we can go ahead and we can do that pop or we can do that peak that we want to do. Now, this applies the same to is full. Sometimes, depending on what language you're programming in and how you implement a stack, you may have a limit on the amount of items that can go into the stack. So before you push a new item onto the stack, 
you need to make sure that there's enough room for it and that it can accept it, right? Just like if you try to put a plate too high on a pile of plates, it's going to fall over if it can't hold that, right? Um, just a basic example. So anyways, that is kind of how a stack works. So now I want to demonstrate the use of stacks in an example where I want to use two stacks to simulate a queue. Now, if you haven't watched my video on queue, I recommend that you do, but essentially a queue is kind of the opposite to a stack where rather than the first item in is the last item out, the first item in is the first item out. So you can see our queue is on this side here. And when I add items, the first item to be added will be the first item to be taken off when we're using those push pop operations or those gets and on queue and DQ and all of that that I've talked about previously. Anyways, think for yourself for a second, how can I use two stacks to simulate a queue? Now, once you're done thinking, I'm going to explain this example in detail. So let's start by just creating and adding a few things to our stack. So we're going to turn this into a queue in just a second, but let's add a few items. So let's add three, two, and one. Uh, actually, that's kind of weird numbers to add in that order. We'll do like five, seven, and negative four in this order. So starting with five. So let's add that to stack one. So we know that when we add items and we stack them on here and we push them, we're going to have five. We're going to have seven and then we're going to have negative four. And since negative four was the last item, it's going to be the first one that we take off of stack one. Okay, so that's great, but that doesn't really work for our queue, does it? If we add our queue, what our queue would look like would be five, seven, negative four, where five right here is going to be the first item to come off. So how do we use this other stack to do that? Well, this is how we do it. When we add items, so I'm going to remove these items from here now. We're going to follow a little bit of a different procedure and we're going to use this second stack. We're going to start by taking all the items in stack one and putting them onto stack two. So pushing them off or sorry, popping them off stack one and pushing them to stack two. So in this case, it's empty. So all we actually end up doing is just putting this first item that we want to add here, which is five onto stack one. Now this works as our queue because well, there's only one item. So obviously that's going to be the item we take off. But now let's move to the next example where we have seven. So how do we now make sure that seven, since it's added after five, isn't going to be taken off first? Because if we just put seven and we start taking it off, well, then seven is going to get taken off first. What we actually do is we move all of the items from stack one onto stack two. So we put five, which is this right here, onto stack two. I know I'm butchering writing five and we erase five from this stack. We then take seven, which we want here, and we push it onto stack one like this. Now we take all the items from stack two and we restack them onto stack one. So we pop them off here and push them back. And now when we do that, we get five here. And well, we can erase this from stack two is this is just kind of our intermediate stack. All right, that's great. Pretty simple for two items. Now, what about three? We'll watch this same process as before. We take five and we stack it onto stack two. So we pop off the top of this and push onto the top of this. Then seven, same thing, seven goes here. Now we can erase these from here. They no longer exist. We take our new item, which is negative four now, and we put negative four onto our stack, which is stack one. Now from stack two, we take all these items and we put them back onto stack one. So when we do that, we're going to get these in reverse, which means we're going to get seven and five. And now you can see this is following the queue order. So when I want to take items off and I'll just erase them from here to make sure no one's confused. We start by taking five, then seven, then negative four. And every time we add an item, we simply take all the items off stack one, put them on a temporary stack two, just by popping and pushing. And then we add that item to stack one and then pop and push back off the temporary stack so that we get in the correct order. So the new item you add will always be at the end of the stack and be the last item to take off, which follows FIFO, which is the way that our queues work first in first out. So anyways, that has been the video on stacks. I hope you guys learned a little bit. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again in the next data structures video.